Welcome to the Warley Motor Railway Club virtual event featuring Club Life, the exhibition and the exhibitors. We hope you enjoy this presentation. Hello there, I'm Sam. I'm being joined today by Matt from Dovetail Games and we're going to talk to you about Train Sim World 2, uh, the fantastic simulator that allows you to live out your rail driving dreams. Uh, for the next 30 minutes, we're going to show you everything there is to know about the game and uh, give you some of the sights and sounds that you can enjoy while playing it. First off though, Matt, you are the senior producer on Train Sim World 2. What's it all about? What is it? Train Sim World 2 is a first-person train driving simulator you can play on your console or PC that allows you to immerse yourself in a wide selection of routes from around the Europe and the USA. So when you say it's a, a train driving simulator, what exactly does that mean? What can you do? do you, uh, are we just sat there like a passenger or are we in full control? You're in full control. Uh, you're sitting in the driver's seat or the engineer's seat and you are driving the trains, operating the levers, uh, interacting with the onboard systems. Uh, you can turn on the safety systems. You, can, you are driving that train and uh, it's your job to uh, complete the tasks and get the train where it needs to go on time. So does this include uh, uh, turning the trains on, turning them off? I mean, how, how complex can it be? Uh, you can take make it as complex as you want. At a very simple level, the trains can be ready to go, fired up, or you've got to release the brakes and press the throttle and off you go. Uh, if you want a more authentic experience, you can turn off assistance and aids on the screen, uh, which allows you to learn the route, and you can turn on advanced safety systems, which the real drivers use, which require you to really know a lot more about what's going on and how these trains work. And really, it becomes a super authentic experience at that point. That all sounds great, but talking about it's all well and good, how about we see it in action? Uh, now, the first of the three routes that comes with Trains in World 2 is the Bakerloo line in London. Uh, Matt, how do you go about putting a line like this together? So we do an awful lot of research. Um, we get a lot of satellite imagery from uh, online. We get a lot of photographs. There's the Bakerloo line is, uh, you know, it's very famous. The whole underground is famous. So there's a lot of video uh, material on um, DVDs and on, on YouTube and so forth. So we have access to a ton of material. Plus there's other materials we try and find. And we've got people who actually work on the line as well, who can provide advice uh, on various aspects. So we combine a huge variety of different um, uh, sources of data together to try and get a real picture of how the line is how it's built how it's used because operate it's understanding seeing the track is different to understanding how the track is used how the signaling is used and we try and capture that uh, operation element into what we try and recreate in the game as well so are we talking about the the full end-to-end -end route uh, or is it just a, a small element of it this is a model of the complete Bakerloo line from Elephant and Castle to Harrow and Wealdstone um, with all of the underground section between Elephant and Castle and Queen's Park um, and then you've got from Queen's Park up to Harrow and Wealdstone you've got the uh, the overground section so there's two very different experiences as you're driving along going from the uh, the dark tunnels um, out into the broad daylight as you then um, you then speed up towards uh, Harrow and Wealdstone. So the underground is not just the, the line itself, obviously in the overground section, you can see quite a bit of London. How far do you go in replicating the real world? We look at uh, what you can see uh, and we model back as far as you can see. So if you're in London Road Depot, which is also modelled uh, in the in the route as well, then uh, you can see the Shard, for example, in the distance. Now that's quite a long way from uh, from the Bakerloo line, but it's such a you know big building. You can the skyscraper, you can see it. So that's got to be there. Um, otherwise, it's it's relatively close to the track, but always making sure that you don't see the end of the world. You, it's uh, we try and model it to where we you know from uh, from the cab and from flying in the general area of the uh, train. Uh, you get a really really good uh, feeling of immersion that you're actually there. Okay, well let's see a little bit of the route in action so that you can hear what it sounds like.
So obviously the route is vitally important when you're going to recreate a line like this, but uh, but what about the trains? Uh, are, are we expecting to see the real thing from modern day, or is it set sometime in the past? This is uh, the current uh, current trains. They're the 1972 stock that uh, are on the route currently. Um, some of the oldest stocks still on the London Underground, um, which makes it really fun to drive. Um, we used all sorts of reference material, just as with the route. We, again, we try and find whatever we can find to understand what's going on inside the cab. We'll find photographs. Uh, we were able to do reference trips, uh, courtesy of Transport for London, uh, both to understand the route better and to uh, get photographs of the trains. Um, and then digging into what each switch does. We talked to tube train drivers that um, drive both the 1972 stock and and other stock uh, on the underground um, to try and understand uh, how the tra how these functions are used when they're used um, so that we could try and capture the experience as well as just the individual buttons and switches um, and uh, yeah we try and merge all of that together. So you say you've worked quite extensively with Transport for London uh, do you always work with uh, the operators of the train lines that you're working with? Wherever possible, we absolutely want to work with the, the operators of the train lines. We get so much great support and information uh, from them. And uh, as you know, in case of Transport for London, they helped us secure uh, access to the, un uh, the unique fonts um, for all the signage and so forth on, and the signal posts so that we can represent. It's, it's an important thing to capture things like these fonts and get them accurate. And they helped us with that. They helped us get things like the, the Sherlock logos from Baker Street Station so that we could make sure that these iconic things that when you turn up at Baker Street Station are things you expect to see and uh, we were able to check uh, get those in there and then TfL were able to also then look at what we've done and say yeah that that's that's a good representation of what we what we have so it's uh, it's really good to get that feedback because it's crucial to get that feedback but obviously nothing is really as great as getting the feedback from the drivers that drive on the line and you know as I said we've worked with drivers uh, on the, uh, the, uh, the London Underground and uh, once they started getting a product which was much more close to complete there was some really interesting feedback that came back validating what we'd done so for example there was a lot of debate over how dark the tunnel should be when you're driving in the tunnels it feels really quite dark um, when you're in the tunnels in, in the game and in actual fact it's possibly darker than that in reality uh, when you look on videos and cab rides and so forth it's always really bright in front of you and it's because of course they turn on the lights for the video because otherwise the video wouldn't do much uh, or they literally strap a torch a giant torch to the front of the train so again you can see but you don't have that that's not the normal experiences for a driver so the tunnels are dark but what's really nice about the dark tunnels is you then burst into these bright stations which works really quite nice you get this really nice quite uh, contrast between the light and the dark in the underground there's things like the power on the brakes and the, the way that the these trains speed up and slow down really rapidly and you sort of you need practice to get the confidence that you can come into these stations at quite a speed put the brakes on and come to a stop exactly where you're supposed to and this is the, the skill and the experience that the real drivers have and one of the things you get from driving in train sim world is you you get to experience that for yourself exactly how these you know what these drivers are doing and equally when they've looked at how they drive how we drive on the uh, in the game and they've given us feedback on now yeah, at this point we would be cutting throttle here and coasting in and then putting the brakes on and you can do all of the stuff you know the drivers were describing these things it all works in the game so you can drive to your style or you can try and drive to the way the real drivers do it as well the, the game supports you playing how you want to play Great. So if you want to be a digital tube driver, you have the facility to do so in Train Sim World too. But you mentioned, Matt, that uh, uh, it, routes are included from various places around the world. And that's the second one that we have in the pack here is, uh, is Sandpatch Grade, which is in the USA. Uh, what's it all about? And, and does that hit a similar level of authenticity? Totally. Sandpatch Grade is uh, in the USA. It runs from Cumberland in Maryland to Rockwood in Pennsylvania and features one of the steepest grades uh, in the United States. Uh, so this is predominantly a freight railroad. Um, so it's uh, it's operated by CSX Transportation. So you'd be running big, heavy, um, uh, powerful American freight trains uh, hauling coal and uh, all sorts of uh, different freight up and down the line. There's two coal mines on the line as well where you'll be loading coal cars um, and then bringing them back and um, it's it's just it's a really different unique experience um, to the United States. So how does the driving experience differ between uh, what is arguably a fast and nimble uh, tube train and, uh, and one of these massive American behemoths? 
a driving experience is completely different. It's um, just releasing the brakes um, takes a while uh, because you're dealing with trains that are significantly longer, uh, can have 40, 50 um, uh, freight cars behind you. And um, releasing the brakes on that can take you know several minutes uh, for the air to work its way down the train uh, and similarly applying the brakes so and then i'm harping on about the brakes because really that's you know that's the key thing with these is it's um making any train stop is really the main challenge of driving a steam train but when you apply the brakes or release the brakes having nothing happen for a little while just makes it all the more hair raising and uh, and challenging so it's uh, you're in charge of 4000 tons of 5000 tons of freight um, coming down one of the steepest gradients in, in the United States, you're going to need to be on top of your game and really understand how to make keep control of that train. And that's kind of where this, this experience is, is really fun. So how do you go about making that feel realistic? Uh, are you just using some smoke and mirrors there to make it feel like a heavy train? How does the, how does the game actually understand that, that one set of wagons that you've got is quite light and another one is super heavy? Is there, is there some special magic going on behind the scenes? So we've got a physics system that uh, that works or that manages weight uh, across. So every individual wagon can have its own its own weight, and that's tracked and managed according to the gradients that you're on and so forth. Um, but then there's also uh, an engine we built uh, of our own called Simigraph, which manages how all of the physics internally. So what we call the stop and go physics. What when you pri- when you apply the um, power on the throttle, you're just moving a lever. But there's a whole load of things that then happen before power makes it to a traction motor on the wheels and the train starts moving. Similarly, when you just simply move the um, the brake lever to the released position, there's an awful lot of things that happen on the, on the train that take, as I say, several minutes to complete before all the brakes have actually released. And so we model all of those things inside Simigraph. So it's modeling all of the uh, pneumatic, electrical, mechanical things that are going on, down to valves and pipes and hoses, um, generators, uh, traction motors, all of these different things are being modeled and run in real time in the simulation. And then uh, the time, for example, for air to flow between pipes uh, and through systems is tracked as well. So when you release the brakes, they don't release on the entire train simultaneously. They'll release at different parts of the train according to how they would in real life, which just actually makes it that much more challenging and a lot more realistic. And that sounds like fun, but don't you find that most players have a favoured country that they want to drive the trains from, or more still, a favourite era that they want to uh, that they want to experience? So yeah, everybody likes uh, has got their favourite types of trains, uh, and um, they'll they'll turn up because they like sandpatch grade, and they want the, they want the heavy freight experience, and it's got all their favourite you know big American trains in them. But because the other trains are there, um, you know, a lot of people will give the other trains a go, and actually there's an awful lot to learn about those trains and, and most train enthusiasts are train enthusiasts and they're really keen on learning about different trains and fascinated to understand how those different trains work and can find whole new areas of enthusiasm and interest um, we've, know, we've known people that have come into the hobby as an American enthusiast and completely switched their enthusiasm to German or English trains because actually having played it in the game they got an insight into what was going on there and really appreciated you know what was going on there and not just their what they play in the game that's changed but their entire enthusiasm for trains has has sort of shifted because they've had that in-depth insight that you just can't get watching a video necessarily or or reading a book you're you're in that world and you're you're learning to drive that train you, you can't get closer than really being there so when you're dealing with massive freight yards and putting together consists of trains that, that span dozens, uh, if not more, wagons, uh, are, you still, are you doing all of that from the cab? In addition to uh, driving the trains, uh, part of what you're going to be wanting to do is to uncouple and couple um, other cars. You'll be wanting to switch points. You might just want to wander, have, a, have a look around the rest of the map. And you can get out of the train. Uh, in Train Symbol 2, you are you are the per- a person in the world, and you're not the train. So you can press a key and stand up, walk around inside the cab, open the doors, climb out of the cab, down the ladders, and walk down the train, operate the levers on the uh, wagon and uh, operate switches and points uh, on the track and then get back in the train uh, and really increases that immersion of feeling like you're really there because you, you, you can walk around and see and you really appreciate as well particularly with the American trains just how enormous these things are when you get out of the train climb down the ladder and you look up and it's 
it's towering above you. Very different view to when you're sitting in the cab and looking out of the window at the world around you. So that's quite an in-depth freight service you've got going on there. And obviously with Bakerloo Line, you've got quite a heavy passenger service. What's the, what's the main difference between the two in terms of driving experience? So when you're driving passenger trains, um, you're going to be, uh, tr you're, first and foremost, you're adhering to uh, a timetable. And the timetables that we recreate are recreated from the real timetables. And they're surprisingly strict. It, it, it's, they're, they're, you, know, you need to really work hard to keep to these timetables. And a lot of that is learning the, pa learning the, the way that your train drives. Um, accelerating a train is relatively straightforward. You just put it into go and off it'll go. The difficult bit with any train, and this applies to passengers as well, is stopping. And the key thing with stopping a passenger train is not coming into stations too slowly because you lose so much time you won't be able to keep up with that timetable. But if you come in too fast, you might miss the station entirely and no one wants that. So um, it's really learning the uh, how you approach every station, where are your breaking points, what's the right way to approach a station so you can come in as quickly as is appropriate, bring brakes to a uh, train to a stop with the brakes, get the doors open and closed and get on with the next station so that you can keep that timetable uh, running on time. We run a full 24 hour day timetable uh, which means that you can pick up services anytime in that day, uh, enjoy a sunset right, uh, um, drive, enjoy a or a sunrise uh, journey or even something midday or a nighttime one it's, it's there's different services throughout the day and of course as just as it's in the real world the what you see on the network will be different at the different times of day if you're driving a peak hour service you're going to see a lot more traffic than if you're driving something off peak at midnight or something like that which means that you're more likely to get influenced by other trains holding you up for example um, or more you're going to hold other people up if you're not driving uh, as well as you could be so different times of day you'll get a different experience um, and you can you can just pick that from the timetable the freight experience is really different to passengers because it's really much less about being to working to times. Um, it's much more about the wagons that you're hauling and um, doing switching or shunting in uh, the, biz the various yards, assembling trains, breaking trains apart, and then taking trains from different uh, from around different yards and across the line. Um, you'll also find that as a freight train. You're, you're kind of a secondary citizen in a lot of cases on the railway, second to the passengers, which means that you're going to potentially be pulled aside. You're going to be made to wait at red lights for passengers to come across. So it's somewhat of a more interrupted experience. Um, whereas, so you're not adhering to timescales, but you do need to have, manage approaching maybe a lot more red lights than you might be used to. And um, obviously you've got a much heavier train to do that with, so you need to be driving a lot more cautiously and planning much further ahead than you might with a, a passenger train where you're rocketing into a station at quite high speed. A passenger tra a freight train, you need to be coming in, coming to your stops much, much more relaxed. So the third route included in Trainsim World 2 is uh, the Colm Aachen High Speed Line. Um, what's included in that and how does that challenge differ to what you might find elsewhere in the world? Colm Aachen High Speed includes the uh, really, really well-known uh, Intercity Express or ICE train, uh, the BR406. Um, it's a 300 kilometers per hour capable train. On this route, it'll be doing speeds of up to 250 kilometers an hour. So it's the fastest route in the game. And um, to go with that um, high speed train experience, because you're going faster than the 160 kilometers an hour that's traditionally used on the German railways, uh, you need an additional signaling system called LZB. Uh, so this train, this train implements all of these German signalling systems for LZB, PZB, it's got AFB, it's got CIFA. There's, there's, it's a technical marvel, uh, this train, and it's really great fun driving it at the high speeds uh, between uh, Köln and to Duren, and then it switches back to traditional lines between Duren and Aachen. Um, additionally, the route also comes with the BR442 Talent 2. So it's not just about driving high speed trains ridiculously fast from one end of the route to the other. When you want to change a pace, there's then the Talent 2 for commuter trains. So you'll be stopping at a lot more stations and um, see what else is going along on the route as well. So there's, there's two different experiences running at different paces with that route. Now, Germany is perhaps famed for its uh, safety systems on the rail. Uh, how much of a learning curve is involved in, in getting to grips with those and understanding how to get the best out of them? So learning um, PZB is... Uh 
is difficult uh it's about having the right materials and resources and we we have some online on our youtube channel and there are other sources online that you can find as well um once you've got the hang of it it's actually quite straightforward there are a number of concepts that you need to understand which are not really commonly understood for uk uh, particular where for example you're acknowledging situations with a knowledge acknowledge button but there's no alarm telling you you need to acknowledge it in the UK. But there'd be an alarm going off. You'd press a button, and that would be it. In in the UK, in Germany, um, at an appropriate time when something needs to happen, you press the button, and then what well, you know you did it right because the train didn't stop. Um, and that all sounds very daunting. But once you understand the rules for it, it's actually quite straightforward, and it's a hugely rewarding step to go from driving without. The German uh, the PZB system to driving with it when you finally get when you get to the end of your first successful run with PZB enabled wow that, that that's a really cool experience everyone I've spoken to has always felt that that was worth learning because it's just so much better when, at the end of it so should I expect to have to study all these routes to learn out where the different speed limits are and the different safety signals and so on uh, or can I just play it in a, a beginner's mode and, uh, and just enjoy the drive. When you first start the game up, there are tutorials um, for each of the trains, uh, which will walk you through how to get the train going, how to make it stop, uh, and all the things that you need to know. It's a very basic level just to get 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 started with each of the trains. So each train has that has a tutorial of its own. Um, there's then support on screen in the form of a head-up display or a HUD, uh, which tells you in a common format for every train where how fast you're going where the upcoming speed limits are what the current speed limit is so you don't need to necessarily understand the route or even the train that you're driving once you've understood where everything is on the hud you can follow what the hud is telling you and then you can use that knowledge to learn the train based on what you're understanding and also to learn the route yes you will find it a much more rewarding experience if you learn the route you do not need to though you can drive entirely based on what the game is telling you and then as you get more experienced uh, and you want more of a challenge, you can go into the settings screen and turn one or more or all of these settings off to where you get the, the full driver authentic experience with no help. And you're, you, you need to know the route, you need to know the train, and uh, you can do it fully realistically. So what else comes with the game then? So we've got, we got three routes and the, uh, and the trains associated with them. Uh, and uh, and then presumably a whole bunch of different timetables and scenarios and that kind of thing. What else can I do? So one of the, the key things that you can do is you can decide what you want to do. So we can we, we include this thing called a scenario planner, which means that you can create your own gameplay. So you can put the trains that you want to drive on the routes that you want to drive them on, doing the things that you want to do with them. Um, so you know if you want to do something different with the trains, you're not just limited to. There's an extensive amount of gameplay that's included in each of the routes, but with scenario planner you can then make all your own gameplay as well and do what you like with that stuff and then we also include a feature called off the rails inside scenario planner which means that you can do things which are a little bit weird a little bit non-standard things that may even not work in real life so if you want to put the uh, put a giant american freight train on the london underground there or you want to run the uh, um, the electric London Underground stock on the non-electric Sandpatch grade, you can do that. The game will figure it out for you and you just tell it you want off the rails mode and then it will enable things that don't make sense but it can make work for you. Um, which can create some really fun situations. Even better, you combine that with another feature called the livery designer, which is where you can take all the trains that are included and uh, they'll be uh, presented to you in a basic light gray color scheme, which you can then paint and you can recolor them, put different logos and decals and things that create your own custom liveries and designs to your heart's content. There's some amazing things that you can do with that. And then combined with the off the rails in scenario planner, you could create your own fictional operating company where maybe you've decided that the 1972 stock in um, your bright cyan livery um, will be running on the sandpatch grade and delivering, working on doing passengers and so forth. You can do that stuff with off the rails uh, in scenario planner and the livery designer. So above and beyond the, the standard gameplay that comes in it, there's an enormous amount of creativity that you can then bring to it and then do whatever you like essentially. So there's an absolute stack of things to do in the base game when you pick it up, but if you want to take it a little bit further, there are expansion routes available. Uh, what have you got in your library of expansions there, Matt? 
there's a wide range of different things covering uh, 1980s BR Blue on Leeds to Manchester, uh, modern day on the East Coastway line from Brighton to Eastbourne and Seaford, um, or you can go to different locations in Germany um, and run on the uh, the Munich to Augsburg line or the uh, the Rohrsieg line from out of Hagen. Um, there's different lines in America. You can be driving the Long Island Railroad passenger trains out of New York Penn Station uh, into one of the busiest stations in America at Jamaica. Um, and uh, switching and freight over uh, in, on the Canadian National Line at, uh, on the Oakville subdivision. So there's, there's, there's a huge variety of different things, with, and it's uh, cross-passenger and freight, express, regional, um, and then there's loco DLCs on there as well. And for something of an entirely different change of pace and speed, there's like routes like the West Somerset Railway, where it's a, mo a model of the, uh, the West Somerset Railway as it is now, um, and there's, um, there's Class 52, Class 33, Class 47. There's a range of different stuff, uh, trains that you can drive uh, and uh, on that route and, and enjoy what is actually a really beautiful line um, on, on, on Train Sim World 2. Well, it sounds like you've got plenty of variety in there and, and certainly monkeying around with the scenario planner, you could probably come up with some really quite interesting combinations. Uh, what have you got coming up in the future? Uh, is the game finished? Have you got more to come? What's the story? The game is, is constantly being developed all the time. We're always adding new content. We've got um, new routes. Uh, we've got a roadmap published for upcoming routes and trains, which include uh, the French uh, LGV line on the Mediterranean and the uh, Southeastern High Speed line between London and Faversham, featuring the uh, stunning Class 395 Javelin trains. So there's, there's some really amazing stuff upcoming and the collection is constantly growing. Um, and we grow it based on a lot of our customer feedback, what they want us to actually actually develop what locos they want to see what routes parts of the what routes they want to drive uh, what features they want in the game um, so we're always listening to that via our forums and our uh, social media and really trying to produce the game that everybody wants we're all trained fans and so we want to create the game that uh, that speaks to what we all want to do so there you go, plenty to see and plenty to do in Train Sim World 2. If you'd like to find out more information about the game, you can head to trainsimworld.com or you can follow us over on Facebook if you just want to see what we're up to uh, by looking for Train Sim World. Uh, we also do Twitter, just in case Twitter is your thing. Uh, meanwhile, if your PlayStation, Xbox or PC feels like getting involved in a little bit of train simulation action, it is available right now. And, uh, and can be acquired from all good stockists. Right, well, I'm off to go and drive a BR Class 101 from Leeds to Huddersfield, because that's just what I feel like doing. Matt, how about you? I'm going to be uh, departing New York Penn Station in a Long Island Railroad M7 and uh, heading my way to Jamaica Station. Well, that sounds like fun to me. Thank you very much for watching. Uh, this has been Train Sim World 2 from Dovetail Games. Cheerio. Thank you for watching this Wally virtual event presentation. Please remember to like, comment and subscribe. We hope to see you when we are back at the NEC on the 27th and 28th of November 2021.